should comply and we should take our kids and we should pull them out of school. That anger is driving school board elections, both in the number of candidates and the huge number of voters who cast ballots today. This was the other big election driver, heated city council meetings with protesters demanding police reforms. The result, big turnout and new faces coming to school boards and city councils. Good evening, I'm Aaron Kiernan. I'm Dan Winters. Thank you for being with us on a very busy night for county auditors all across the state. Thank you to you poll workers, nearly mm -hmm. 3,000 elections across Iowa just today. And the results are in and we have team coverage tonight. WHO 13's Justin Surrency is following the three Des Moines City Council seats on the ballot. And our political director Dave Price is monitoring Metro school board races. We want to start with the largest district in the state. Just two candidates on the ballot in the first Des Moines school district. This one to fill the seat left by the resignation of Heather Anderson. The board appointed Kimberly Martirano to that position in August of last year, and she will continue in the position. She defeated Shelley Scooster by seven points tonight. The two at large board positions were also on the ballot today with just a few precincts still coming up. Uh, it's Jackie Norris and Maria Alonza Diaz having comfortable leads in those tonight. With just two districts outstanding, voters appear to have easily approved a new revenue purpose statement for the district. The measure guides how the district can spend money for the one cent local option sales tax. Possible uses of the money include school or stadium construction, equipment purchases, land purchases, and to pay off prior bond measures. WHO 13 political director Dave Price joins us. Dave, school board elections taking place all across our metro, including seven candidates on the ballot in Ankeny. A lot of races with a lot of candidates. We have numbers for some races still waiting for some others. So let's roll through them quickly. Ankeny, a lot of focus on what was happening there in that race. Seven people running. Three people were looking to pick up slots tonight. There was just one incumbent on there, and that was Lori Lovestead. But the unofficial results here, she did not make the top three. So the unofficial winners were the three conservatives who ran here. Joy Burke, Trent Murphy, who's a former school board member, and Sarah Barthol. You might remember Governor Reynolds had endorsed her, the only candidate we know at this level that the governor had endorsed. Those three who won had opposed mask mandates. Now in Waukee, we are still waiting for numbers. There's so much attention, so much focus on that race, but Dallas County is not reporting any results yet. There were eight people running in that race, and you'll remember there was a super PAC involved. We sometimes see this involved with maybe one candidate. You don't usually see involved with four, so they had supported four. They're picking three. They're still waiting on results there. Just one incumbent was running in that race. Johnston also influenced by some outside organization here. You had people, uh, three of the candidates there were signed on to the 1776 pledge and they all won. So they are the winners for this at large seat. Evans, Davis and Tidball, the three winners, all unofficially of course, but those are the three winners in that Johnston race. We are waiting for results from Story County, so we do not have results for Ames yet, where there are seven people running. All of them are new candidates, and we are seeing them at this happen at different places across our viewing area tonight. There was an outside group involved with that one. People there are complaining who are supporting those candidates about Black Lives Matter material discussed in the classroom there. Southeast Polk, and this is one of those funky ones if you follow geography here because we're dealing with three different counties with Polk, Jasper, and Marion. So overall, we now have 94% from those three counties. I think Polk is all the way in. So we were looking at Marion and Jasper to try to finish out here. There were six people running there looking for three openings. Adam Krell and Rick Powell are the incumbents. And as you can see the latest numbers here, you can see the top three with Bridget Ernst and Whitney Smith McIntosh. Those are both challengers in this race, but that one's still not official. You talk about candidates, you have to look at North Polk. There are three seats available. There are 11 people running on there. Two of them are the incumbents, James Hill and Keith Borman. And with 95% in those two incumbents here, are at the top. Remember, we're going for three here. Matthew Eicher at this point, 11 
votes up, holding on to that third slot there. Indianola, another crowded race here. You're talking about 10 people running there. No incumbents at all in there, and this one is now 100%, so unofficially uh, final here. Whirling, Mills, and Rankin, the top three vote-getters. You can see Rankin won by just 51, 53 seats in that race. Uh, a couple more to look at here quickly. Looking at Urbandale, where there are nine people running, three people, uh, three seats available, no incumbents at all in this race. So nine new faces here, 92% in where you have Mankey, Mead, and Kent, the top three vote getters so far. And then finally, we close out with West Des Moines, where you had seven people running, three openings, no incumbents again. And this one at last check is 90% in here, Star, Morgan, and Elliott are top three finishers. Normally we don't have nearly this much focus on school board races, but there were far more people running. The interesting thing, Dan and Aaron, is if you look statewide, a lot of the incumbents were running, but in some of these metro districts where they had really contentious school board meetings and yeah. so much debate over <laughs> mask and no mask, you see some of those incumbents who decided to step aside. Yeah, just sit this one out. Okay, very interesting. We'll have more to digest with all of this tomorrow. Thanks, Dave. And look, while those school board meetings were heated, none of them ended up in any arrests, which is not the case at the Des Moines City Council. Remember back in June, multiple protesters were arrested for disrupting that meeting with demands for police reforms. The protest also prompted some new candidates to get into the race. And WHO 13's Justin Cerency joins us live outside City Hall. Justin, a new face coming to this governing body. That's right, Dan. Yeah, the race is for the three city council seats. A bit of a mixed bag for the experienced candidates. Two incumbents held firm of their position and will continue as city council members. But the shocker comes from a 27-year-old woman who upsets a seven-year incumbent and spent the past year and a half really pushing for change inside City Hall behind me where she was fighting for that change that she believed in. Now she'll be on the council member's side of things, hoping to make those changes official here in Des Moines. Now these results here on the screen are unofficial, even though many of the precincts, in fact, all have been reported, so some still trickling in. But so far, there are still votes coming in for the at-large city council race, but incumbent Connie Bozen leads challenger Justin Lewis 54% to 45%. Some votes also still coming in with the Ward 3 uh, situation there where incumbent Josh Mandelbaum has a strong lead on the field. Mandelbaum with 66% of the votes. Challenger Corey McAnelly with 20% and Brandy Weber with 12. Ward 1, as we mentioned, the surprise here, 27-year-old Indira Shoemaker with receiving 46% of the votes. Seven-year incumbent in Ward 1, Bill Gray, receiving 36% of the votes. Marcus Kanan also received 6%. Now, born and raised in Des Moines' northwest side, Schumacher says she wanted to put action to her words after helping organize numerous racial justice marches in 2020. Seeing tonight's results of Ward 1 has left her shocked and proud of the people she says she'll now represent as a city council member. And I have a strong sense of justice and what I believe in right, is right and wrong. So I'm not worried about that. I do think, however, that the institution is intended to quell things like this, to quell change and dissent. It's, it makes it hard. Um, and so my goal is to be not pulled in by any of that. My goal is to stay grounded in my community, to stay grounded in the people that got me here. Inside Mars Cafe in Des Moines' Drake neighborhood by Drake University, uh, Schumacher discussed being muted, as she said, at city council meetings for trying to uh, voice her opinions. And so that's what she's talking about with her voice being quelled. But uh, she has very little political experience except for organizing marches with the Black Liberation Movement after the death of George Floyd, fighting for racial justice. She's been working with the BLM, and one of their main fights which has become very public and a bit of a lightning rod, has been defunding the police. While that has become a buzzword and hot button issue, Schumacher says her top priority is still to keep Des Moines safe for everyone. I have no intention to make Des Moines less safe. I want to make it more safe. I think that 
My goal is to build up safety, build up justice, and build up a system where we aren't put in situations where we're in a hard spot, where people are going to do something that could be harmful, but we also aren't perpetuating violence and perpetuating trauma by then bringing in a violent force to tear apart our families, tear apart our communities, criminalize us for not having resources, for not having homes. Schumacher says the main reason she got into running for city council was her sister at one of the marches said, stand up and say something. So she decided to back her words and speak and then run for city council. So putting her money where her mouth is. She also talked about uh, being for the people from the bottom up, not from the top bottom. And uh, one of the main VIPs who congratulated her after it was unofficially official, I guess you should say, would be congressman here in Iowa, Democrat Akhail Abdul Samad, who said he hopes to be working closely with Indira Schumacher. Yeah, and she'll be able to speak with her vote once she's sworn in. Justin Cernsey reporting live at City Hall tonight. Thank you, Justin. And another big issue on the ballot, water and land conservation in Polk County. It's going to be getting another boost. Back in 2012, you may remember, voters approved a $50 million bond referendum. Tonight, voters approved another $65 million in funding for the next 10 years. This is how the money will be used. The largest amount will go to water quality, followed by parks, land purchases, and trail construction. The money will also fund the county's purchase of Sleepy Hollow Sports Park. The county plans to use $5 million to build a campground and to improve ski trails at the park. Yeah, the majority of parks might not get a lot of use until this weekend at least. Ed, we know we got some really nice weather on the way. Yeah, we have some great weather for the weekend. Tonight, though, it's going to be another hard freeze night. We do have those temperatures back below the 20s as we are into the teens.